What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make your at-home studio photos go from looking like this to this. Now obviously this is really good for anyone who has a small studio space and wants to get that big studio feel without having to go spend that big studio money to get that look. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure to stick around for the entire video so you don't miss out on anything. As always, before we start this video, make sure to subscribe and like, it really does help this channel grow. And while you're here, make sure to leave a comment, it helps the algorithm push the video to new people, which is always awesome and very appreciated. With that being said, let's jump right into the video. So basically, the way that I do this is by using Photoshop. Before I go into Photoshop, however, I like to throw all my photos into Lightroom, and then in Lightroom, I like to cull and edit basic colors for all the photos. I do this because once I'm editing the photos, I know exactly which ones are going to need this edit or not. I don't want to edit all of them to have this big studio feel if I'm not actually going to use all of them as final photos. So let me just go ahead and show you guys that process real quick. I'm just going to grab a random photo and I'm going to throw one of my presets on it and call it a day. If you guys want to get your hands on my presets and edit like I do, there'll be the first link in the description below. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and throw that photo into Photoshop. Now the first thing I like to do when in Photoshop is before I make any adjustments, I like to duplicate the original layer. This just allows me to have that backup in case I mess up something. I won't have to restart the entire project. I can just delete everything and then just reduplicate that original layer and then start over again from there. So always duplicate your original layer. It'll give you something to fall back on in case you mess up the edit so bad that you have to restart. Once the original is duplicated, we're gonna lock it and turn off the visibility and then we're gonna only be working on the duplicated layer. So the first thing I like to do is I like to make any crops right off the bat. So say I want to crop this image to four by three, I'll do that right away so that I don't have to fiddle with cropping afterwards. This will save time because once you crop from the beginning, it will lessen the amount of processing power your computer needs to actually use in order to do what we're about to do. So what we're about to do is we're going to be using the content aware fill and the content aware scale and other content aware tools that are in Photoshop. If you guys don't know what these tools are, make sure to stick around. I will be showing you a couple of different variations of this tool. They all do essentially the same thing, but different tools are used for different instances. So when you want to take a really big part of your photo and just extend it, the easiest way I find to do this is by using the selection tool. Once you have the part that you want to extend selected, you're going to hold shift and hit F5. This is going to bring up the content aware fill uh, little box. And then from there, just make sure you have these settings and hit OK. Give it a couple of seconds. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer if you're doing really big selections. And then boom, some magic is going to happen and your photo is going to expand and it's going to fill in and it's going to look really, really nice in my opinion. Keep in mind, this doesn't work 100% of the time. The busier the photo is, the less likely that this will actually work. Sometimes you'll get some artifacts and sometimes it just won't work altogether and you'll have to do a different method. The second method I like to do is using the patch tool. Same thing, select whatever area you want to expand and then simply drag over some area that you think would look like this. This is gonna help skip that process of having Photoshop completely guess what it would look like and have you kind of guess what it would look like. In my opinion, I don't really use this for big selections because when I use it for too big of selections, it doesn't really work. I typically only use the patch tool for smaller details in the photo. You're gonna use this method for both sides of your backdrop and extend it. And then once you're done with that, go in and use the patch tool and use the patch tool to fill in all the little debris and all the little dark patch areas within the photo because you don't want anything in the photo or on the backdrop that's gonna be distracting. If you have like a small tear on the backdrop, just go in with the tool and remove it. Very simple stuff. So once you're done with that, just do any final adjustments that you want and you essentially got your final image from here. You can either export it back into Lightroom by hitting Control S or you can just export it straight out of Photoshop. I personally like to export it back into Lightroom by hitting Control S and just saving it. Uh, so that I can export multiple files at once and not have to do the individual exporting of files. But yeah, that's about it. That's all you have to do in order to get your big studio feel with not having such a big studio. So that all being said, I'm gonna wrap up this video. If you guys enjoyed this video and found it useful, make sure to go ahead and like this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you guys wanna get my presets, it'll be the first link in the description. And if you guys aren't already following me on social media, make sure to follow me at Moody Darkroom. All my social media is at Moody Darkroom from my Pinterest to Twitter to Instagram, everything is at Moody Darkroom. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you in the next one. Yeet.